Assembling a vise in Onshape is a great example of its powerful mate capabilities. Let's take a look at what it takes to put a vise together. The first step to assembling my vise is inserting the parts. I'll first place the vise base. Then right click and fix the base. In this assembly, the base is fixed and all other parts will be attached to it. Now that we've finished that, I can insert the other parts of the vise. The other parts include a vise jaw, spindle, shaft, and bolts to mount the vise. Now that we've inserted all the parts, we can start to assemble. The key to this, of course, is mates. For the first mate, I'd like to attach the shaft to the base. I'll use the cylindrical mate to locate the shaft in its correct location in the vise base. Simply choose a mate connector at the center of the shaft, and another at the center of the hole in the base, and the cylindrical mate leaves a rotational and linear degree of freedom, which allows the shaft to move back and forth, as well as rotate. Now that we've placed the shaft, let's mate the vise jaw to the base. For this task, we'll use the slider mate. I'll select a mate connector from an edge of each part. And if I hit animate, you'll see that it restricts all movement except one linear degree of freedom. So the jaw can still slide back and forth in the base. Now it's time to attach the vise jaw to the shaft. For this, we'll use the revolute mate. I'll choose a mate connector at the end of the shaft and a mate connector at the vise jaw to attach it to. The revolute mate allows a rotational degree of freedom, allowing it to spin, but restricts all other degrees of freedom. The next step to assembling the vise is attaching the spindle to the shaft. The spindle attaches to the shaft with no degrees of freedom. In traditional CAD, this might be a series of mates to get this in the correct position with no movement. In Onshape, I can use one fasten mate to attach the two. Fasten mate allows me to restrict all degrees of freedom, allowing me to use a single mate to attach the spindle to the shaft. We are nearly there and the next step is to mate our mounting bolts. These bolts ride in a slot allowing you to line up the bolts with their nuts in the table. This is a great example of the pin slot mate. I'll select the base of the bolt head and the center of the slot. I'll animate the mate to ensure the secondary axis is correct. If it is not, I can use the reorient secondary axis to realign the mate connectors and give me the correct motion. You'll notice that the pin slot aligns the correct direction for motion, but it does not restrict the movement to keep the bolt in the slot. To accomplish this, we can use limits. I'll edit the pin slot mate and check limits. You can define a limit for every degree of freedom in this mate. In my case, I want to allow up to 5 eighths of an inch of travel and then stop. I'll use 0 and 5 eighths of an inch as my minimum and maximum value in the x-axis. I'll animate one more time and you'll see the range of motion is restricted to stay within the slot. We can also use limits to restrict the vise jaw. You'll notice that this jaw does not stop when it reaches the end of the base. To accomplish this, we can edit the slider mate and add a minimum and maximum travel to the Z axis. This will restrict the vise jaw to move only within the base. So we are nearly finished with this, but I want realistic motion to this assembly. And that means when I rotate the spindle, the vise jaw should move in and out. To do this, we can use the screw relation. I'll simply select the cylindrical mate that attaches the spindle to the shaft, and then define a ratio. For every one rotation of the cylindrical mate, I want a half inch of travel. Now you'll notice when I rotate the spindle, the screw relation will drive the jaw in and back out. 